Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Left Off The Map. Now the restaurant that I'm the culinary curator for in Hobart called Peacock and Jones is a fabulous duck dish. I think the duck that they do or that we do there is my favourite dish on the menu at the moment. So I'm going to go through the processes that we go through to make the duck so good. So we're going to dry age the duck breast and we're going to use the bones to create a sauce as well. The first thing I have to do is break down the duck. So the two knives I'm going to use, I'm going to use a chef's knife and a utility knife to do this. You want to cut around the joints. Cut down through there. And that gives us our leg. Leg skin side down into our salt. I'll talk about why we use salt in a minute. So now we're going to take the crown off. So you want to find a part in the spine that you can push the knife through and then just snap that spine. So you should be able to take that piece off, pop that in there. Now we need to do the same thing at the top. Take our, our wing tips off first from the top. Our wing tips are going to go in there, they'll end up making our sauce. Find a spot in the spine that the knife will go through. Take that off. So that's our crown. This is going to go into our salt. So we've got rock, rock salt in a roasting pan. Our legs have already gone in skin side down and our breast is going to go in skin side down as well. And that's going to draw moisture out of the, the, well, out of the duck, out of the crown. And what that does, it enables you to dry age without having to worry about bacteria. So skin side down, onto our rock salt, still on the crown. Just give it a pat and get as much of that moisture off as you can. So that can go into the fridge now. We'll keep that in there, check on it every day, but we're going to keep it in there for about three days. And what that does, dry aging it, takes moisture out which intensifies flavour and you're going to get a really crispy skin from that process. So the good reason that you buy a whole duck is to get all these little offcuts, these giblets. We'll roast those and create a stock out of them. My duck bones have finished roasting and I've popped them into the fridge. What I'm trying to do is basically solidify the fat that came out in the roasting process. I don't want to take that fat into my stock pot to create my sauce. So the easiest way to get around that is to let that fat harden in the fridge and then take your bones out, pop them into your stock pot, then all of your vegetables go in. So I've got some celery, carrot, onion, garlic and some thyme. That's all going to get chopped and go in with my duck bones. I'll cover that with water and bring it to a slight simmer. At the point in which I'm happy, then I will strain the stock off and start creating my sauce with that stock. Here is the duck that we had on salt and then after about 24 hours on salt, I took it off the salt and just left it turned over in the fridge to dry out. I've got some trimming, so these are just the offcuts from the um, thigh bone that I took off these drumsticks when I was cleaning them up and just a few little offcuts. And that's going to be the start of our sauce. So we've got our stock made. So heat on. Oven on. Temperature down to about 185 is fine. Kick that off. Heat on. So the whole crown, skin side down into our pan. We're going to start to render out some of that fat. That's the last little bit of scum there that needs to come off that sauce. The red wine. So we'll keep moving this, get some colour. That's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to reduce. I've got a fennel or a quarter of a fennel that I'm going to dice. So I'm going to try and get some of that fennel flavour into my sauce. My celery again. I don't need anywhere near as much of this as we had at the start of our stock. So like a quarter of what we had at the start of our stock. Garlic, probably just, I think we had like three or four garlic cloves. I just want a couple this time. 
and this time I'm using half an onion. All right, let's see how we're looking here. That color is pretty good. Take that off the heat into my oven. Now I need another smaller saucepan. I can turn the heat down. Just a little bit of oil. I'm going to cook off my bones, my trimmings. So some color on that. Once that's nice and golden, then my vegetables are going to go in. Then my reduced uh, stock red wine and ruby port will go in on top of that. It will reduce down one more time before we strain it and we end up with our finishing sauce. All right, there's been a pretty big process to get us to this point. So I can turn our reduction off and I'm left with this really intense sauce. Here's the duck breast. Then we've brought it out and let it sit and rest for a good eight to 10 minutes. Now we're ready to carve the breast off the crown. So we'll make our cut. We're working that breast away. And that cooking on the crown is far more superior to the flavor that you get just cooking the duck breast as you normally would. So we've got a perfect piece of duck breast. Reduce my sauce down 30 seconds to a minute. And then that can be served. I'm not gonna serve it on top because if I do that, the, the, what I've done to create my crispy skin, I'm gonna ruin that. So that would go in a jug on the side to be added to the dish when it arrived at the table. So it would give me 30 seconds to a minute. While that's happening, I'll take my other breast off and then we'll get our plate up. Well, that is kind of why you pay to go to a restaurant like Peacock and Jones, a three day process that creates duck breast like you've never had before. If you want to try it at home, you absolutely can. But if you want the full benefit, come into Peacock and Jones and see how the kitchen team and I do it there. All right, now we're off to Leap Farm to learn a little bit about goat's cheese and goats in general. Mm -hmm.